I said the prayer, I go to church, I truly believe in Jesus and I'm trying to walk with him, but why am I still struggling with sin? Whack. Wait, you're saying that Christians still struggle with sin? And the answer to that I think is emphatically yes. But is there ever a point when it might become easier? And I think the answer to that one could be yes. But if that's true, I mean, why does it seem like so many Christians struggle tooth and nail to overcome sin in their life? Well, that's probably why you're here today. So I'm going to show you the Believer's Guide to Sin and Sanctification. Today on Church Door. Have you ever been given a video or a book from someone that after consuming it, you felt like, man, this changed my life. Wow. Like you were so inspired by it that you were like, wow, why haven't I had this all my life? As a pastor in Northern Indiana, a big part of our church was training up disciples who make disciples. And of course, we had a method of biblical training that we taught on a regular basis. In one of those regular meetings, I remember one guy who was in his 60s, and after that biblical training, he said this, how is it that I'm in my 60s and I'm just now learning about this in my Christian walk? I wish I had learned this years ago. Unfortunately, I think this is true for so many Christians. We go through years and years of struggling, failure, when all we really needed was just a little bit of guidance. And one of these main areas I see people struggle in is the area of sin and sanctification. That's why I'm calling today's message the Believer's Guide to Sin and Sanctification. Now, most people know that sin is a willful rebellion against God's will, but sanctification, that's a very Christian-y word. Sanctification. But essentially, this means being set apart. It's about the process of God making you less about your flesh and more about him. But let's be honest, that doesn't happen easy, right? The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it is death. Therefore, if our way leads to death, we need to do everything we can to evict it from our lives. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. There's an example in John chapter eight where religious leaders are bringing this woman who's in sin to Jesus. And in this moment, we get some really good hints about what it means to deal with sin. The scripture says this, at dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand up before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law of Moses commands us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. So what can we learn about sin and sanctification in this story? I think we can learn this. First, we must deal with our own sin. Well, we start looking really Christian on the outside and then we start thinking, oh, well, what about Bob over there? You know, maybe he really needs to clean up his life. Yeah, what does Jesus say in the instance of these religious leaders? He says, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. Hey, dummy! In other words, stop worrying about everyone else and worry about yourself. Rather than throwing stones at others, realize there are things in you that God wants to deal with. And some of the issues that God is dealing with in us may be bigger than the issues we see in others and we ultimately condemn. Matter of fact, what some people believe is that Jesus, when he was writing in the sand, he was actually writing out the sins of those religious leaders for all to see. That's why they all dropped their stones and walked away. Now, we can't know that for sure, but think of it this way. If your sins were on display for others to see, what would you do? 
You'd run away mortified thinking, I'm such a miserable person. But that is just the process of sanctification. Jesus shines a light in the darkest parts of our life saying, hey, let's clean this up. Let's get it out of here. But then comes a question, when we really look at ourselves and God's shining a light on our sin, how do we take care of it? How do we become sanctified, more like Him? Well, I think the scripture gives us plenty of ideas here too, and I wanna give you three. First is find the exit. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will provide a way out so that you can endure it. There is a way out of sin when it comes our way. We just have to be looking for it. Far too many have looked at their sin and just submitted to having it around. We make concessions and excuses thinking, well, it's just how I am. But here's the thing, your sins are not who you are. It's just as much as the good things in your life are not who you are. If we are in Jesus, we are His. And if we are following him, it's because he loves us that he shows us our sin. He says, hey, it's time to leave this sin behind. The exit is right over here. So when we are shown the exit, then what? I think the second thing we do is run to the exit. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. So if God shows you the exit, you run to it. Get as far away from the sin as you can and then run to what he says, righteousness, faith, love, and peace. To say it another way, it might be less about what you're running away from and what you're running towards. And finally, if we wanna know how to get rid of sin and be sanctified, we have to have good friends who will block us from going back to it. James 5, 16 says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Listen, this is not easy, being vulnerable with other believers, because I think that in our experience in this world, sometimes our weakness might get exploited against us from others. That's why relationship is a long-term investment. We must cultivate relationships with other flawed believers. And because they are flawed too, it takes time to build a bridge of trust on which hard truths can be delivered and received. The unfortunate reality is that so many have been burned by this process that they just give up. Therefore, they miss out on the great benefits that come from accountability and challenge from other believers. Well, let me encourage you. The first step is not about being vulnerable, no holds barred right out of the gate. All right, let's go. But step one is starting to press into relationship with other people. People who are wrestling and working out their faith with fear and trembling. Look out for the frauds, people who look like the Pharisees. They look like they have it together and they like to point fingers, but look for people who are humbly sharing their struggles, that they are in a continued process, letting Jesus sanctify them. You don't have to do this alone. If you're looking to run from your sin and be sanctified in Christ, reach out to us today. We got a team of people here today that wanna to walk with you. You can reach us down in the chat or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Hey, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that comes in goes right back out to help people just like you take their next step with Jesus. Hey, the party doesn't have to stop here. Let's keep hanging out together. Hit that button right in the center of the screen. Go ahead, do it right now.